there are three keys i can tell you the protocol of an encounter god does not reveal himself until he's needed more than any other thing that has stolen his place in your life there is so much god wants to do is there someone who has dedicated himself don't act like you are not hearing his voice return return to the place of the altar return no excuses pastor pray businessman pray politician pray parents pray children pray prayer does not kill it empowers the strength of darkness is ignorant hello everyone have you ever been desperate for divine visitation in your life i think we all have moments where we just oh god would show up and there will be a divine intervention a divine visitation apostle joshua Solomon helps us to know how we can initiate a divine visitation in our lives please be blessed as you listen three keys you want to have an experience with god a personal testimony with god key number one are you ready you must have genuine hunger and thirst an experience with god is not a gift it is a reward an experience with god is a harvest the seed is genuine hunger and thirst jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 13 until you are hungry enough to seek the lord and you shall seek me is that in your bible and find me when you search for me with all your heart you are the thirst you are the street you are the hunger living deep inside of me you are the food that satisfies you are provision for the journey of my life you are everything that is the song of hunger you are everything listen until you seek him more than preaching until you seek him more than ministry until you seek him more than ambition ladies and gentlemen i tell you that i if i don't claim to know many things but this one i can tell you the protocol of an encounter it starts with hunger hunger that is beyond money hunger that is beyond fame hunger that is beyond revelation greek and hebrew words hunger that is beyond power that is the kind of hunger that leads you to an experience with god is someone learning already hunger hunger and thirst most believers love god but they love him passively matthew chapter 5 and verse 6 blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness it leads them with an assurance that they shall be filled i do not know one person who dedicated his life to seek god and ask questions that god did not come through for I, by the privilege of God's grace I have studied about revivals across this nation the history of the church in Nigeria and across several continents I have studied revivals in Europe revivals across islands revivals across places every major move of God starts when men take him seriously you cannot take God as a necessary luggage and find his power and his grace mm -mm. Please, someone understand what God is telling us tonight. Yes. Some of you, huh? after this conference, you should go for a retreat. Cancel all these unnecessary ministrations that distract people to keep making a mockery of your Christian experience. Lord, I need to stay with you. I'm tired of presenting a God that I do not know. I'm tired of preaching a message as a man of God and going back and discussing with my wife. I hope what I said was right because I'm not even sure myself come on now please I'm tired of giving excuses 
when people come and say man of god why did you say god bless you and yet nothing changed i'm tired of lying to them that is because you don't have faith proverbs 18 and verse 1 through desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddled with all wisdom there is a level of hunger ladies and gentlemen please hear me the way god works back god does not reveal himself until he is needed more than any other thing that has stolen his place in your life you don't find god if you pursue him and something else uh -uh. the jealousy of god demands that he becomes your exclusive obsession if you are going to find him that you will seek the lord psalm 14 and verse 2 let me tie up a few things here psalm 14 and verse 2 i found this scripture and it blessed me so much psalm 14 and verse 2 i don't know if you have it projected but i'll read from here here's what it says it says they looked the lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek god he was looking down is there any other someone on earth is there someone in jalingo who needs to see my power is there someone who has dedicated himself to say lord i may not understand you but what i see is not you when i see you i will know this one is you you've heard my story this is how i started honestly and it is still my obsession today lord i want to know you more i confess my ignorance there are things i do not know don't let men clap you into mediocrity there are still virgin dimensions in the spirit we have not seen let me tell you in bible days those of us today that you clap for would be ushers or in the welfare department the qualification we use for ministry today is what they used to serve in the welfare department what a spiritual atmosphere so I don't know what kind of grace the preachers had. I know their secret is found in Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. But we will give ourselves continually. Don't distract us with some of these mundane things. We will give ourselves continually. Jalingo, there is so much God wants to do. And the Lord has placed it upon his Lordship to call this convergence and to call us it's time to stop playing church and stop playing all these things there are souls going to hell every day while we are giving excuses there are sick people who are backsliding and going back to shrines we are telling them stop going to a herbalist and they are asking you what is the alternative don't tell me to stop going to a native doctor when it worked for me for 10 years and you are bringing an alternative that is not working let us respect the desperation of men it's easy to criticize and say this one you are still visiting a herbalist give me an alternative that is superior when jesus came he said repent for the kingdom is at hand and he saw a woman with a withered hand he said stretch forth your hand i have brought the reality of the kingdom oh let our children not return back to idolatry because we are living in an environment that is not bearing witness to Jesus. I made up my mind that in my lifetime, as far as the mandate of God given to me is concerned, I will see that the name of Jesus does not fall to the ground. Whatever it will take to keep that name lifted, to wave the banner of Jesus from Nigeria to the ends of the earth, as far as there is breath in my nostrils, I will not watch my generation mock the integrity of the one who died for me. Whatever you want to do, Lord, you can do through me. Whatever you want to say, Lord, you can say through me. Whoever you want 
to lift Lord you can lift through me and here's the reason I'm yours Jesus I'm yours forevermore I'm yours Jesus I'm yours listen some of us when we gave our lives to Jesus it was not an affair we we're looking for we're looking for a real it was a covenant as akin to marriage a relationship that we are here for the long haul not just some selfish thing to get power or get fame or get whatever it is please return someone God is speaking to you don't act like you are not hearing his voice return some of you this was not how you started your Christian experience when you started with God you were given to a life of dedication but right now either failure or success all of them can do the same effect negative effect to your spiritual life failure can bring discouragement success can bring complacency both failure and success if not guided can destroy your life hunger 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 i'm a businessman from i will just come to church and contribute um you know when i sense a need that god wants bishop to have a new car i will carry 20 million or 30 million and give and buy him an suv wonderful obey god if he tells you to do but let me tell you the truth if that is the scope of your christian experience the fire that is coming upon the nations in this end time you will not be able to last i assure you it is those who bear roots downwards that will be able to bear fruit upwards there is no time for nominal christianity either you are with god genuinely and completely hallelujah someone say hunger say one more time say hunger hunger and thirst that is the first requirement if you want an experience with god apostle but i've been praying for a job and i don't have a job now why don't you use the opportunity now since you don't have a job you are not engaged somewhere why don't you use the opportunity and say lord i seek your face i know that i may not have that time can i tell you as most people you see who are on fire today they started before the burden of family life the burden of children the responsibility of leadership when they were free the bible says it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth young people let me talk to you there are some of you who are just getting distracted with on unguarded use of social media i'm not saying it is wrong but I'm telling you, if you don't defeat that demon of social media, you will eat up the early stages of your life. You will wake up and find out you are 30, you are 40, no spiritual investment. You will turn left and see three or four children, but no relationship that commands power. Use every time to seek God now. Use every time to seek God now. Use every time to seek God with your heart and with your life. key number two what is the second key if you want to have an experience with God are you ready intense prayer and fellowship that is the second key you want an experience with God key number one is hunger and thirst you must hunger for his presence you must prioritize and value him more than money more than preaching those who are following by way of television following from your home the lord may be speaking to you right now you are following from nigeria from across africa europe america jesus is speaking to you for many people the language for you tonight is return god is saying return this is not how we started return i don't care if you are a preacher or whatever respectfully speaking return to the place of the altar Samuel had the voice of God simply because he was lying down close to the ark. Number two, intense prayer and fellowship. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. The Bible says, call unto me and I will answer. I will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not. 
he leaves you with an assurance that if you call i will answer that means god responds to the call that cry of desperation oh may god restore the days where people can hold on to you don't hear it again that people lock themselves for three days praying and fasting not just for things lord show me something some of you men of god respectfully speaking remember how you started god brought me here to drum it again it's not condemnation but god is telling you some of you while you were on campus this was the secret of the power return no excuses prayer oh i seek your face i seek your face the psalmist said oh lord you my god early will i seek you my soul longs after you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water to see your power and your glory in my life even as i have seen in the sanctuary is someone learning restore the ministry of prayer in jalingo again restore the ministry of prayer i submit to you five minutes prayer will not bring revival i submit to you once in a while emergency prayer he spake a parable luke 18 and verse 1 to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first thessalonians 5 17 he says to pray without ceasing does not just mean pray from morning till night it means be consistent prayer must be built into the system of your spiritual growth pastor pray businessman pray politician pray parents pray children pray prayer does not kill it empowers pray pray one of the major assignments of prayer is to transform you into superior spiritual versions luke chapter 9 from verse 29 the bible says and as he prayed the he being jesus now the bible says the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistering as he prayed not before he prayed not as he wished as he prayed you can turn the fearful version of you into the warrior version of you in prayer are you hearing me you can turn the fearful version of you to a warrior version show me a man who is not serious with god submit that person methodically on that guided mentorship to pray and i show you a wonder walking fashion of that person you can fake power but you cannot fake relationship if you don't have a track record with god it will show someone say prayer you must learn to pray you must learn to pray let us restore every home in jalingo should become a prayer altar it has nothing to do with feeling whether you are spiritual or not you can start today how many fathers pray fathers if your children do not hear you praying they will not become prayer warriors don't say i am too busy how beautiful is it when children and are sleeping and the priest gets up and wears his priestly regalia 2 a.m 3 a.m and you are praying burning that incense of prayer one day your child will follow you you will drive him and he will not go back then the day you travel the angel of the lord will wake him and he will start taking that position that i can assure you on that any man who is not given to prayer don't trust the visions they bring no worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb worthy worthy is the lamb that was slain when you submit yourself to prayer among the many things that happens is your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit begins to be activated your discernment your perception your ability to perceive and receive spiritual things all of a sudden you begin to download revelations from the realm of the spirit god now can begin to trust you with things about your life and the others it has nothing to do with being a prophet you don't have to be a prophet to be prophetic 
being prophetic is a spiritual quality it's a product of growth in the spirit number three what is the third key if you desire an experience with god high level spiritual illumination high level spiritual illumination the scripture we read initially job 33 and verse 3 call unto me and i will answer he says then when i'm done answering i will not stop there he says i will show you great and mighty things which thou knowest not so when you pray it ushers in it gives you room to also access knowledge superior spiritual revelation in this kingdom our dominion is at the instance of the mysteries of the kingdom that we understand matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 jesus is teaching and he said it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven let's read job chapter 29 job chapter 29 follow carefully while i read beginning from verse 1 job chapter 29 beginning from verse 1 this was a man who manifested supernatural dimensions of grace and job is leading us is like a tour to explore his spiritual pathway to show us the secret behind him being a sign and a wonder are you ready pay attention moreover job continued verse 1 his parable and said all oh, that i were in the months past as in the days when god preserved me verse 3 when his candle you see the secret now when his candle shined upon my head and when by his light i walked through darkness so there were two kinds of light that job was exposed to in order to be great the first was the lights that came upon his head illumination the second was the light that was up his path direction you need those two kinds of light if you have direction without illumination you will still waste your time the light that shines upon your head and the light that shines upon your path these are the levels of light that equip you for a life of exploits let's continue as i was in the days of my youth when the secret of the lord was upon my tabernacle when the almighty was yet with me when my children were about me verse 6 it says when i washed my steps with butter and the rock poured out oil out rivers of oil seven when i went out to the gate through the city when i prepared my seat in the street we're reading to verse 10 the young men saw me and hid themselves because of the level of results the effulgence of the possibilities of the spirit that emanated from him the agent arose and stood up the princes refrained talking and laid their hands on their mouth the nobles held their peace and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth what a man job said you see all these exploits behind them were these mysteries the secret of the lord was upon my tabernacle it was by his light upon my head and his light on my path thy word O lord he said is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path there cannot be dominion in ignorance there is a relationship between knowledge and power knowledge and dominion this kingdom is a kingdom that operates by light the bible says god made many lights but he made two great lights and the first light to rule the day and the second light to rule the night all lights rule whether it's in the day or the night light has always been associated with dominion the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light is that true isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 kjv says arise shine for thy light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you amplified says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light we need light man of god you need light politician you need light 
for God to open your eyes to see what you need to do I pray and I cry for light as though I have never known him I have seen the value of light it is the light of God by his message that has brought us where we are today and it is that same light that will take us further let me tell you something please hear me do not pride yourself believing that you know enough the Bible says let every man who thinks that he knows knows that he does not know as he ought to that I may know him the realm of knowledge you want an experience with God that gives you power and turns you into a sign and a wonder that the first key is you must cultivate a hunger for him the second key is that you must give yourself to the ministry of prayer and fellowship apostle paul was mentoring the church in corinth and he said the grace of our lord jesus christ he said the love of god and the fellowship from the word koinonia the, the sharing together the participation of the holy spirit he said let it be with you nobody becomes great by mistake the same way no plant becomes a giant by mistake nobody carries a giant tree from the forest and brings it and keeps it it comes as a seed a seed that is well nurtured they that be planted in the house of god the bible says they will flourish in the courts of our god why because primarily they will be under the ministry of pastors according to jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 and i will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and they shall feed you with wisdom and understanding paul cried praying for the church in ephesus from chapter 1 of ephesians when you read from verse 15 he cried bowing his knees to the father of glory that he may grant unto the church the spirit of wisdom and revelation that the eyes of their understanding be enlightened that they may know amplified says that your eyes be flooded with light please make it as a project to fight ignorance fight ignorance like you fight cancer fight ignorance like you fight satan the strength of darkness is ignorance jesus himself knew what he ought to do it is a risk in this end time to not know what to do an experience with god comes at the instance of genuine hunger an experience with god comes when you submit yourself let me tell you something about the ministry of hunger for a long time your hunger will not look like it will be filled but you just continue to press and honor that hunger the day god comes to you he comes with a compensation plan to reward you for your times of hunger and press did the bible not tell you that he is a rewarder hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 it says without faith it is impossible to please him for he that comes to god must come knowing two things number one that he is he exists and then number two that he is the rewarder it's not just what he does it is his name but not a rewarder of those who are christians a rewarder of them that diligently seek him and then for prayer oh prayer has rewards please do not let anyone fool you that prayer is just some labor that does not carry power no genuine prayer transforms you and then from the transformed you produces tremendous power through you james chapter 5 and verse 13 he said is any man afflicted he said let him pray the biblical recommendation to manage affliction is prayer when you read down to 18 he says elijah the fervent an effectual prayer of the righteous man availed much he says elijah was a man of like passion yet through the power of prayer he locked up the heavens that there be no rain for a space of three and a half years and when it was time to open the heavens it was still the same prayer we'll deal with that tomorrow and then the power of the word you must contend for the word you must contend for the word let me tell you something about the manifestation of the presence of god john chapter 14 when you read from verse 21 jesus was speaking and here's what he said he that keepeth my commands he says he it is that loveth me and i will love him is that in your bible and my father will love him and then he says we will manifest ourselves to him 
then when you read verse 23 he says it again that i will manifest myself to him god does not reveal himself at random he values his own presence enough of lukewarm christianity enough of one leg in and one leg out we have been called corporately to be witnesses of his resurrection according to acts 4 33 and with great power the apostles gave witness don't say i cannot speak english don't say i didn't have the privilege of going to school or i didn't go so far to be a professor or a doctor in as much as all of those provisions are advantages but i want you to be sure that for everyone who is available god is more than willing to make you a witness beginning here from jalingo and to the ends of the earth i believe with all my heart that beginning from tonight there are worshipers that will rise as witnesses there are businessmen who will rise as witnesses there are preachers who will rise as witnesses it's time to graduate from being a preacher to becoming a witness it's time to graduate from being a politician to being a witness can i tell you when you are a witness the one who sent you will defend you and make sure your visibility does not diminish because your presence is important for his reputation we believe you were blessed by the message you just watched let us know what stood out to you in the comment section you can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos so more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages we celebrate you and see you in our next video thank you